You want to buy some oysters? Got a couple nice ones down back. Mont Blanc Oyster Grey. I thought that would be an interesting ink to cover in the Ink Encyclopedia. I once had a Skype discussion about that with Eric, not just about the zine, but we were talking, and you may have noticed that we both have a tendency to talk a lot. Um, and at some point, the conversation struck Mont Blanc Oyster Grey, and he said, Yeah. I think it's just a yucky looking dirty gray ink and I actually like it so that's as interesting I think I sent him another sample and I'm not sure I think the last time I talked to him he was looking for the ultimate gray ink and actually he he liked it better than he liked it at first so what have we got well you get the standard Mont Blanc 60 milliliter bottle uh, which is fairly interesting pretty nice ink I think uh, pretty nice bottles, I mean, I think. Now, they have the, the snowflake on there, or the star, or the top of Mont Blanc, or the six peaks of Mont Blanc, or whatever you like to call that. Um, you get, in this case, grey ink. I'm not a huge fan of grey inks, but if it has to be a grey, I think this one is very nice, because it's well shaded, it's well behaved. Um, I, I, I generally like it especially in broader nibs. I think it has a very nice uh, well feel to it. Good shading, as I said, good, good flow properties. There was one issue I had with the ink, and that is when I put it in my noodlers, the regular, you know, the, the, the demonstrator flex pen, the piston filler that I always use, it just wouldn't write. And I let it sit overnight, it didn't, still didn't write. I, I did a lot squeezing ink into the uh, feed, etc. It just didn't write, so I, I, I took my other uh, noodleless piston filler, uh, the, the flex pen, and that didn't write. I put it in Ahab, it just wouldn't write. The only noodleless flex pen I could get this to work in is the Conrad. I wonder why. I wonder whether it's something to do with ebonite feeds. I can't imagine, but there must be something with this ink that doesn't, doesn't agree with it, because my noodleless pens write with any ink. So I honestly don't have any ideas. If you see another pen, I think I also explained it in the writing sample, but just so you know uh, what's going on there. And that's all let's do it. So that was a long introduction. I think we need to see how the ink performs. And that's what we're going to do next. So I hope this is going to be useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with... Mont Blanc Oyster. Uh, please note that this is not the regular Noodler's piston filled flex pen. Uh, I have tried two. One of them, the, the transparent version, this is the Bumblebee version. They wouldn't write with this ink, no matter what I did. I really tried for 15 minutes. I tried it with an Ahab. Uh, I'm not sure I love the Ahab, but it didn't write with the ink. Uh, the ink is in there. So I'm not sure what it is with these pens that's that's interfering. Maybe it's the ebonite feed or something. I, I honestly wouldn't know. But I guess Noodlers just doesn't really like shellfish or something, because it doesn't work with the oyster ink. Um, for some reason, this Conrad is the only Noodlers pen I could get to write with uh, the ink. And even that is not extremely uh, enthusiastically, so to speak. So I'm, I, I'm not sure what's going on there. If anyone has an explanation, then I'd, I'd really be interested, because it's it's kind of strange. So I'll, I'll go on with the, um, the Conrad. Uh, I've worked a little on that nib, so it's not exactly factory, but that's that's okay. Fine. Then we go to medium.
see it's already quite a bit darker, this ink. In a medium nib, I mean. In a broad nib, It's quite dark, and in an italic nib, it's quite dark too. So as to legibility, I guess it really depends on the type of nib you're using. In a fine nib, it's quite light. And actually, for me, this is too light. I wouldn't enjoy that. Whereas in these other nibs, it seems to be pretty okay. Let's have a look at some passes to get an idea of the saturation. Because as you can see, it already there are quite some differences in the different nibs. Right. It writes. Okay, so we have one pass. I do think it's a beautiful grey. Nice, light, not too dark, not too intense, but nicely shaded. Let's have a look at some flex writing. I hope that my Conrad will not die on me here, as the other three pens did. No, this looks good. Oyster. As you can see with the flexing, this is quite a nicely shaded ink. Try to squeeze a bit more from the medium nib. Not that easy because it's fairly hard steel nib, but I'll do my best. Broad nibbage. And really wet nibbage too. Excellent pen, this. And a great nib. Smooth and wet, just how I like it. Uh, let me see, what do we... That's dry. Yeah, I, I, this ink dries fairly quickly, I'd say, which is a nice thing. Yesterday I shot the video for Oxblood, which was very, very wet. There we go. Two passes. I'll return to those later. But first, we want to do us some metallic writing, you see. With a little bit of flex, if possible. Now, this is a very hard nib. Let's do something a little fancy. That sounded a little like Professor Tarquin Danglebury. Well, let's do something... What am I doing? Well, yes, you see, it's all a bit fancy. Uh, Professor Tarquin Danglebury is right here. I 
I'm not sure what script this is. It started off as something gothic and then it turned a little old Englishy and now it's well nothing pretty much. Um how are we doing here? Dry. Oh that's fast. Third pass. Come back to that when it's completely dry. We'll have a look at the colours. Take a medium nib. Write something about an oyster. And then we grab a brush. This isn't dry yet, but that is. Oysters can swim, right? Whatever they do. Sit on the floor of the ocean. That's an interesting life, that is. Why didn't you answer the phone yesterday? Oh, I was, uh... I was sitting on the floor of the ocean. Didn't you do that yesterday? Yes. And the day before. What's my job, you see? A light grey and a very dark grey, which borders on black. So, more saturated nibs, saturated pens, will get you something like that. I honestly think this is a fantastic colour of grey. If you look at this, this flex writing, the beautiful shading that goes from light grey to a very dark grey, I think is great. The only pen I really wouldn't put it in is something with a really fine nib, especially if it's a little on the dry side, because then it may be difficult to read. But I mean, look at that, look at the shading, look at all of this. I'll grab some more water. And we'll see what we can do here. Right. I am surprised by the waterproofness of the ink. This being a relatively light grey, I was actually expecting this would be run out completely, but it's still legible. So I'm, I'm surprised. And I, I'm getting the same impression from the calligraphy thing, where it's very light, it may disappear a little, but you can in fact still read it. If you compare that to the oxblood sample I did yesterday, well that's just gone with the water. So, not bad. Unexpected but not at all bad. Let's start with our scorecard. Cleaning. Well, I'd say that's good. I've never had any problems with it. Bleed through. We'll come back to that. Color. That's undeniably grey. Shading. Well, I'd say it's very good. Depends a little on the nib, of course, but in general it's very good. Flow. I'd say flow is very good except in noodler's pens. I mean, I'm, I'm really not trying to bash on noodler's here, but I don't understand what the factor is. I've tried two of these pens, they don't write. And I'm not just, I mean, I've been tapping them, I've been squeezing ink into the, the feed, it just doesn't work. There must be something in this ink that doesn't agree with those pens, but I'm not sure what it is. I've never experienced that with, with these pens, so I'm kind of at a loss here. Drying time. As I said, maybe it's just because Noodles doesn't like shellfish or something, or because Nathan built in something that boycotts Mont Blanc. I, I actually <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised about that. Um, drying time, well, I would say, is, is good. You, you saw it was, it was pretty fast, even with the 6mm the nib. Uh, waterproofness. Well, we're talking about an oyster, and it really seems to be good. Feathering. I'll have to come back to that when I've done a sample on cheaper paper. And that's what we're going to do next. For the record, this is still legible. Okay. Here we have uh, some cheap 
paper. Again, I think that under no pressure, it's not the most legible of inks with a fine nib. With a medium nib, how does this work? Does that look like a an oyster to you, or more like a? A hamburger. I guess this is a, a sort of Rorschach test where you get the ink blots and then you. Yeah, well, if I could draw, I wouldn't have become a psychologist, of course. Medium, broad. Oysters are fun. A very dark grey. I like that. Whoops. Metallic. It's a funny word, oyster. Oyster, oyster, oyster. Oyster. I don't see a whole lot of feathering, do you? Now we're going to put this to the torture test and actually do some flexing. And there we go. The noodler's pen has snuffed it. This is not normal. I mean, the, there has to be something with this ink. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm squeezing down ink into the feed now. I'm not sure how well you can see what I'm doing. I'm not cheating. I'm not trying to disable the noodler's pen. I'm, you know, I love noodlers. I really think it's something with the ink here, and I have no clue what the factor is. There we go again. Okay, we write again. Maybe it was just a light aberration. Well, that writes. Really forcing it to flex to the max here. And in all honesty, I'm still not seeing a whole lot of feathering. A little bit. You, you do see it a little bit around this this part. Maybe here. Maybe there. But it's not extremely pronounced. So it really takes a lot of flexing to actually make this stuff feather. Uh, which is cool. What about bleed proof? Well, it's there. But that's with the really wide nib, the flex nib, that's drawing, bad drawing. But with the regular writing, no real bleed through. And I think with the rhodia, we'll see the same. Yep. Okay, well, that gives me an idea for the scorecard. Bleed through, I would say, is good. Feathering is good. And there you have it. Mont Blanc Oyster. 
Encyclopedia entry. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.